Welcome to Nintendo Dispatch, your weekly Nintendo podcast covering all things from the world of Nintendo. I'm James Matsumontamagno. And I'm Michael Rivette. How's it going, buddy? It's going great. I am still without a phone, though. Oh, no. No way for you to do voice chat during this amazing Splatfest. <laughs> yeah, there was definitely no way of doing that. Um, do you want to talk about the Splatfest? Do we want to? I know we 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 hit on this a little bit. So Splatfest was like it's a it's the first time they've done this in Splatoon two, where they have mm-hmm. multiple Splatfests back to back to back. Uh, the first one I think was Raphael and Leonardo, or is it Leo and Raph? I don't know what it is in this mm-hmm. current version of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. This week it was Donnie and Michelangelo, and then next week it will be the winners of the first previous two. Um, and I'm sad to say that in both cases, the turtle that I like least won. So I feel like next week will be just a total garbage dumpster fire because I don't like either either side. Well, I will say I did. We both participated in this Splatfest and uh, I will say Leo, I, I do like as well. But Donnie is my favorite turtle of all time. And we crushed it. We just destroyed your hopes. And OK, we didn't win popular vote, but we did crush everywhere else. And that's all that matters. <laughs> so we'll see uh, with Rolf and Donnie on um, uh, next week. I'm going to participate again because um it's it was super fun i really enjoyed it i love the colors i love turning on splatoon 2 and then just seeing all the different things it's a whole new game it's like a whole different experience and it really it's one of my favorite aspects of um splatoon so you're I, obviously you're going team donnie i i don't know who i want to go with i i honestly don't know what i'm going to choose for this next one um maybe raf just to balance each other out yeah yeah you could oh that's true we did go basically against each other each time so i do i want to try to to play with somebody too next time because i was just jumping in at random hours i just love splatoon because you can jump in and out really easily to a few games play for 10 15 minutes and then dip out so yeah um but okay let's before we get into even more news because splatfest was a super fun we have two updates about the show we we created nintendo dispatch we wanted it to be this 30 minutes your weekly nintendo everything update and we've noticed that we like to talk pretty deep on some subjects so we've decided that every wednesday you're still going to get your dispatch all the latest news all the upcoming releases and an update of what we've been playing in the last week and then maybe every single week or on occasion on saturdays we're going to give you the 0.5 release so you know episode 2.5 where we deep dive into a topic because some of these things really need more time and you can get our insights on it so that way you're always going to get 30 minutes every single wednesday and then additionally most likely almost every week but you know no pressure on us if we don't deliver this 0.5 release so definitely take a look at that we're really excited and to kick off not only the launch of nintendo dispatch but also these new 0.5 releases we launched a nintendo dispatch podcast contest Michael, we're giving away stuff. I can't wait. I love giving away stuff. I didn't tell Michael that we were doing this. I just launched it anyways. <laughs> uh, it's really easy to enter. We're going to run it for a whole month. Uh, it's going to end on June 10th. And we're giving away a Waterfield Switch City Slicker case, which is a $100 value. Also going to give away a copy of Celeste, Stardew Valley, and Shovel Knight Spectre of Torment. All you got to do is go to nintendodispatch.com. You can tap on the blog button. You'll find the contest link, but it'll be in the show notes below. It's really easy. Just follow us on Twitter. Give us a tweet uh, to shout out the the podcast and boom, you'll be entered automatically and you can tweet every single day for additional entries. So be aware of that. So check that out. And I think we can both agree. Those are some amazing gifts. Like those games are top, top games for the switch. Mm-hmm. So that's, it's pretty cool. You want to jump into the news? Yeah, we've got a lot of news, and I think the number one thing that happened this week is we finally, finally got more information about the Nintendo Switch Online. This is something that we've been talking about, we haven't heard anything about, it kind of went dormant for a while, and now we've got it. So Nintendo updated the website, and we've got a bunch of details. We know that it's launching in September of this year. Um, It's going to have obviously the online play component, but more importantly, I think maybe the most important is we finally are getting save data for cloud backup. Um, welcome yeah. to 2018 we did yeah. it nintendo <laughs> exactly you did it you managed to make this happen um so at, as of right now if something happens to your switch that's it you are sol you 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 lose all of your data 
Um, gone. It's gone. And I know that people have had instances where their switch gets bricked because of, you know, their charging docks or things like that, that they're using. And that's it. They lost everything. A hundred hours they put into Zelda gone. So now we finally, finally get this. I think that's, um, I think that's worth the price alone is to have that that frame like the peace of mind that we can now back this up in the cloud um and that it can come with us and, and go from switch to switch uh we do need more details we need to see this we need to get hands on but i think that's a huge plus in addition to that we also will get the nes nintendo switch online i don't know if it's been said yet specifically if it's only going to be like nes games i I, th I think there's a big question mark about that, um, but they did announce that 20 NES games will be added for online play. Now, there's of those 20, let me pull up the list of all of the games we're going to get here. So they've only listed out 10. Uh, we get Soccer, Balloon Fight, Tennis, Ice Climber, Donkey Kong, Dr. Mario, Mario Brothers, Legend of Zelda, which that's cool one, Super Mario Brothers, and Super Mario Brothers 3. There's still 10 others that haven't been announced. Um, I'm personally hoping for, I guess, like a Contra, and it would also be great if, you know, these are going to be not just for NES, but maybe it's Super NES, and maybe who knows where the, the cutoff's going to be. I think this is kind of exciting. I want more details on it, but I think that's a great start. Yeah, um, I don't want to. I don't want to judge too soon because a lot of people are going banana hammock, all crazy on it. But some interesting things is like you know, it starts at either four dollars a month, eight dollars for three months, or twenty bucks for a year. That's a steal. I'll just give Nintendo twenty bucks a year, and you're getting games. I've already bought all these games, but if you were just to buy those games again, that's going to be way more than you know, two years of this subscription service. And I really want to play you Super Mario Bros. 3 because that's one of my favorite Mario Bros. games. Mine uh, too. But I do like this one thing that I'll point out that no one really talked about is they have a family membership, which is for 12 months for $35. You can add multiple switches. I don't know how that's going to work, if it has to be on the same credit card or something, but it'd be interesting. Um, and also I want to mention here that the online play, I read into the nitty gritty details, they only highlighted Nintendo games that are going to be compatible. They said other games may not need a subscription at all. So be aware of that. It'll be interesting because probably there's games that already are using it. They don't want to lock them in. But yeah, I'm pretty excited about it in general. Just well, I don't want to judge it too quick and we'll probably deep dive when it's actually out. But I will say you and I talked a little bit about the save cloud data, which should just be a feature. And I think everyone's handling it different. Xbox has it. It's for everyone. I'm pretty sure PlayStation, someone could correct me and, you know, if you want to yell at me, but I was reading that you have to have the, the PlayStation plus to actually get cloud save data. And this is the same. You have to have the $20 membership to get the cloud data. Um, so I don't know how I feel. It just should be free for everyone. That's so minuscule, but I don't know if they want the $20, I'll give them the $20. Yeah, I don't have anything bad about this yet. Um, I would need to see it. I need to I need to use it a little bit. But for me, twenty dollars for a whole year or the family pan. Now the now as you said, the that's for the year for thirty four ninety nine. It's up to seven people. So the person that buys it can invite those people into it. Um, I don't know how that works. You know, I, it's it's a family quote unquote. But maybe you have seven friends that all have switches and you all just pitch in and, and do it that way. Um, I think it doesn't necessarily need to be a f real family. So that I don't know what you get or lose by having one person running the account and then having invites. But it's something we can look out when it comes out in the future. I'm excited and I think it's definitely a step in the right direction. Yeah, I agree. Also, another step in the right direction is Nintendo's finally coming out with a proper stand for Switches. Um, I don't think it has HDMI out on it, but it's a twenty dollar stand that you can plug in your Switch, and it'll you know have an angle so you can charge and see the screen at the same time. What a concept! Um, I don't know. It's twenty bucks. It comes out in July. I will pre-order it as soon as I see it on Best Buy or Amazon. It looks nice. I mean, it looks like a piece of plastic that will hold and charge your Switch. So I'm in. Yeah, super simple. Let's get it. 
Yeah, and this other one is a little bit uh, interesting, I would say. I don't want to go too deep into it, but Nintendo and others were actually forced to update their warranty wording. Uh, this came from the uh, FTC, I believe. Both Asus, HTC, Hyundai, Microsoft, Nintendo, and Sony kind of got some warnings that said, hey, you have some weird verbiage around what things you cover specifically around what if you use a third-party accessory or what if there's a little sticker on there they go no 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 that's not allowed in the ftc everyone's been updating their warranty information which is 12 months or so on the switch i'm already out of the warranty i don't know but the statement that nintendo says is that they will honor warranties for defects not caused by the user or by other unauthorized acts and i think here um, previously there were some third party stands that were, um, apparently bricking machines. I'm assuming that they'll also cover that if it's an official Nintendo, you know, authorized, um, accessory, even by a third party that I think that's what that wording means in general. So interesting. Yeah. I mean, that shouldn't even have been a question, right? I mean, if they yeah. were authorized to, if Nintendo, it was official Nintendo authorized retailer or third party or whatever, how do you not support that then you're allowing it to happen yeah you should support that yeah you should support that um so those are the big things from the world of nintendo some huge game announcements and updates to games that i'm super crazy excited for first we all know that we missed out on monster hunter worlds which came out for xbox and playstation but don't worry um because we're back with monster hunter generations ultimate which is going to be the evolution of the 3DS Monster Hunter Generations game. Uh, it's going to be coming out um, relatively soon this year, I believe, uh, for the Switch. What I love about this, so August 28th, I'm going to update it here. Um, uh, what's really cool is that it's going to have all the great online multiplayer features, local, online um, what I love here is that this is the game that was released as Monster Hunter Generations Double Cross over in Japan. So we're going to get this. I think Monster Hunter World actually maybe spawned this. But what's cool is that if you had the 3DS game, you can actually transfer some stuff in from your 3DS into the Switch game. So really cool about that. Have you ever played the Monster Hunter games at all? I played the very first Monster Hunter when it came out. Um, loved the idea, didn't love the execution that much, and I never went back. So I, I'm actually considering grabbing this though to kind of get back into it. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna pick up this. I'm into it. I've always played a lot of them. I just need more time, and the Switch is the perfect console for this. So I'm really excited. Oh yeah. So speaking of things, I don't think you've played, but maybe now is the time to start. Minecraft update. The Bedrock Edition is finally coming out. I've been keeping an eye on this because I am a big fan of Minecraft. Um, I don't play it nonstop. I, I did probably for like eight to a year, eight months to a year. But um, now my Xbox has the Bedrock Edition, which allows Xbox, Windows 10 Minecraft, and Pocket Edition to all play together. So you essentially, I have a realm. Um, my friends can jump on that realm from whatever they're using. And it had been announced that Switch would also be getting this. And it just never came. It, for whatever reason, they had issues. Well, we are finally getting this next month. And I'm going to buy minecraft for my switch because the idea of being able to travel um for work and still being able to jump on with friends and play minecraft it's just a super relaxing kind of tranquil game if you haven't played it it's very you know it just i love it for that reason alone um super excited for it yeah i think it's really cool that we're seeing cross play on a switch i know rocket league is gonna you know introduce a lot of the cross play stuff so this is huge i mean this thing is always in the top 10 best sellers every single week on the eShop. so um, some big things that I'm finally excited for. Oh my goodness, I was a Kickstart backer of Bloodstained Curse of the Moon, which is from Koji Egarashi, uh, who is the Castlevania producer. Uh, Bloodstained Curse of the Moon is a lovely uh, homage to Castlevania, those classic 2D side scrollers. Uh, it's finally, finally, finally has a release date of May 24th for $9.99. That is a deal. Um, they probably don't need too much money because they did raise $5.5 million from Kickstarter, um, which is pretty cool. I'm just excited it's coming out. And at the same time of this announcement that it's coming out in two weeks, uh, they also announced that Gunvolt Chronicles Luminous Avenger IX, I'm going to call it, is coming out, and I believe exclusively for the Switch from what I'm reading. And this comes from the Azure Striker Gunvolt series, which is kind of a... Mega Man esque style side scroller. This looks really cool. The trailer looks super cool. Uh, I'm pretty pumped for it. Uh, 
You didn't kickstart any of the Bloodstain, did you at all? Or no, no. I had a bad experience with Kickstarter once, and I just never. That's everybody. That's everybody. Everyone (laughs) always has a bad experience from it. (laughs) The last announcement I'll bring up here because this is cool because this is from um, uh, Nicalis. I believe that's what I'm going to say. The the publisher and developer Nicalis. I believe they did Cave Story, also the publisher of Binding of Isaac, a few other games. They're releasing a game this fall. I'm going to call it a puzzle fighter. It's called Crystal Crisis, and I'll have all of the characters from that world uh, in it. So. It looks pretty cool. Watch the trailer on Twitter. I'll put it in the show notes below. Um, but I don't know. I, I just like to see more indie titles and more of these cool, unique games come to the Switch. Yeah, totally. And it looks it, it's super cute looking. I like these puzzle fighter games. Um, you know, if it's priced right, I think it's going to do amazing. Yeah, it has lots and lots of views. So definitely check it out in the show notes. But we do have a lot of stuff coming out this week. Uh, we're not going to deep dive into too many things because there's a lot of shenanigans, although we thought last week there's a lot of shenanigans, but let's just go through them really quick. And I'm going to start off, uh, Michael, with our little, our good friend, the Nintendo 3DS. You remember that little handheld? What? 3DS? It's it's a thing. It's happening. Um, it, there's some games still coming out. There's two games. One smaller one uh, called Block a Pix Color, which is a puzzle game, which looks pretty cool. It has 120 different puzzles in it, ranging from small to really large images that you're, you're kind of, it almost reminds me of Pit Cross in a way, which I was a huge fan of. Um, that's coming out for $7.99. But more importantly is Shin Megami Tensei Strange Journey Redux coming out. Uh, if you've ever played any of the Shin Megami Tensei, they're sci-fi JRPGs. I uh, love the art style in these games. It's cool to see this the series continue. I do then think that there's something special about games in handheld form in their classic 2D world, um, which is why I like my Switch so much. There's a lot of that good stuff coming on the eShop. Um, so it's kind of nice. There's bajillions of 3DSs out there. So um, there's that's good. I like it. So um, if you've played those games before, guess what? You're probably going to like this one too. Yeah. So now we're switching back over to the Switch. Get it? Switching to... Right. I see, I see on, what you did there. I yeah, see what thanks. you did there. On the 14th, we have The Mystery of the Hudson Cave coming out, $5 game. On the 15th, we have Battle Chasers, Night War. We have Wizard of Legend, The Adventures of Ilana Temple, and Splitter Critters. On the 17th, we have Yonder, The Cloud Catcher Chronicles. We have Framed Collection. Fairoon? Did you say Fairoon? Fairoon? Not question mark. <laughs> Fairoon collection. Uh, the Banner Saga and White Knight, as well as Invisible Balls, Ice Cream Surfer, which. Oh gosh. Whew, and Johnny Turbo Arcade Super Burger Time. <laughs> Super Burger Time. Super Burger Time. On the 18th, we have Hyrule Warriors Definitive Edition. Little Nightmares Complete Edition, and Henry the Hamster Handler. How excited are you for Henry the Hamster Handler at $3.69? That's the one. That's, That's the, the one. That's the one. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to ask. So we went through, we obviously wanted to go quickly down this list. Is anything standing out? Are there any of these games that you are kind of like, yeah, I might grab that? Yeah, you know, there's a few interesting titles in here that I have either looked at in previous gens. Uh, or um, have been interested in now the banner saga actually this is the banner saga uh, part one i believe this actually looks really interesting it's an epic role-playing viking saga i love the art style it looks very hand-drawn uh, on it uh, it kind of brings me back to some classic games but it's kind of almost advanced war style where you have a big grid and you can move so far like a um, advanced war slash fire emblem style um turn-based type of game i really do like the art style on it when you browse through it you're like wow that's really cool and you can play it through tons of characters you know to be honest there's not a lot in here that really sparked my interest i think that you know the banner saga being i think it's like 20 bucks is really intriguing to me i was surprised that battle chasers night war is 40 dollars which I don't know. It kind of looks, I don't know. I, I think it's coming to retail too. And it almost looks like a top down Diablo style game RPG. I, I don't know. It's $40 is a lot. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm interested in one thing, the fair rune collection only because I played and I highly recommend the Kamiko game, which is like a $3 game on the, 
Switch. It was all like a launch title. It's really cool. This is from the same developers. Uh, and this game is only $9. And it has that really weird pixel art adventure. And this has like three or four games in one. Uh, it's from Fly High Works uh, who did it. So I might pick up that one just because I liked Kamiko so much that, um, I don't know, Kamiko was cool because you could speed run. It was all about getting through it. And I was beating it like, you know, 30 minutes. So I like games like that. I mean, for me, it's kind of the same thing. I, I think this week would have been a huge, uh, may, well, maybe help or hurt, but a lot of these need a demo. Mm-hmm. Um, I have, I'm looking at Battle Chasers as a possibility. I, I've read that it's got great reviews and that the game style is really well done, but 40 bucks, I'm not sure if I can jump on that. It's just, I don't know enough about it. And I like, I mean, you and I both agree, we love our demos. So I think some of these need that. Yonder, the Cloud Catcher Chronicles sounds super interesting. It's so, supposed to be very slow paced. So if you like um, Harvest Moon or something like a, a Stardew Valley, it's kind of in that vein where it's, you know, kind of a beautiful environment and you're kind of exploring the world, but it's much slower. There's not, it's not an action adventure. So that's kind of appealing. Um, there's a couple that are interesting in the sense that they have co-op, which we don't really get to see too often where it's an actual two player co-op at the same time. So it's like wizard of legend. Uh, I think there was another one or two that's in there for me. I think the standout game that I'm going to get is little nightmares, complete edition. Oh yeah. This game looked beautiful. I cannot be, when I saw this at the Nindies and like premiere, it looks creepy. It looks beautiful. I'm a day one purchase. I'm in. So next week we'll be talking about it. I'm a huge like um, Nightmare Before Christmas, Coraline type fan where things are off mm-hmm. and a little uh, like just feel weird and wrong and kind of just, you know, out of there. And this game fits right in that vein for me. I'm really I think it just looks really interesting. It looks so good. Um I'm definitely going to buy that. I'm always interested in Hyrule Warriors. This comes from the Dynasty Warriors series uh, from Koei Tecmo. It was on Wii U. It was on 3DS. This is going to put all of the downloadable content in there. I'm sure it'll sell like bananas. Um, If you like just tons of enemies coming at you nonstop, that's what it's about. If you liked Fire Emblem Warriors, this comes from the same Warriors. That's the series, really. And there's Dynasty Warriors and all these other ones. I'm, I think I'm not going to pick it up just because I've, I think I have it on the Wii U and I never played it. And I also have Fire Emblem Warriors. I bought the big collector's edition and still didn't play it. So that's my, uh, that's my breakdown of viral warriors, but it, it, it got really good reviews on the Wii U. So I'm sure this will be up your alley if you like the hack and slash. Sure. And I mean, we've said it before, everything's better on the switch. So mm-hmm. everything is better on the switch. That is correct. Yeah. <laughs> Um, that's going to do it, I think, for the actual updates. And we still got some time to talk about uh, what we've been playing, which I'm really excited because last week we talked about a lot of games. In fact, this weekend, a bunch of games crept onto the eShop out of the box. Um, do you want to kick it off? What you've been playing bes- besides Splatoon? You know, what else have you been playing, Michael? Uh, so I think we mentioned it last week. I was really looking forward to the fall. So I grabbed that as well as Pinball FX3 and Death Road to Canada. So Death Road to Canada is one we've been watching for a while. I think people know it's um, kind of like a pick your own adventure. We've talked about it briefly. I cannot seem to get past day like, I don't know, like 12 days to go. And I just, I keep getting destroyed. The game is crazy difficult. Mm -hmm. Um, Do you like it? I I do. I really do enjoy it. I, I can see where I may, I don't know how I will keep replaying if I can't, figure out where to go like not where to go i mean you only can go one way but um i I think i think a huge key to the game is picking good teammates and you know i don't know if i'm finding people or i'm i'm making the right choices so that's part of it i'm i am enjoying it though i think it's just weird and fun and i like supporting that um pinball effects three i had a blast with i can see where i may pick that up when i'm bored I don't know if I, it's not an everyday player for me. I really enjoy it. I really, I, I bought the portal table um, and playing like the the one that you get to at when you start. I will say that I have the high score currently out of you and I, um, just throwing that, 
Mm-hmm. Just throwing that out there. Um, I wasn't sure if you were aware. I did tweet it, but you know, you might miss it. When you when you when you beat someone on your friend's high score, there's a little pop up that comes up. It's very satisfying. Um, that tells you that you beat one of your friend's high scores. So I really like that. Yeah, I love all of the pop ups and things that come up. Um, it does make me. Speaking of Nightmare Before Christmas, it really does make me want a Nightmare Before Christmas table. <laughs> yeah. Um, one thing that I did notice, and I think it's odd, and I'm not sure. I'm not sure why. But Xbox, PlayStation, they also have this game. They have all their tables that we don't have. And uh, like a Star Wars and something else, I think. And I just think that's, I, I don't get why that's the case. Um, in addition to those, I've been playing the fall. So I, I bought it. It's really super um, story, atmospheric, and I beat it. It's a short game. I would say maybe six-ish hours it took oh, me. Okay. Um, the the controls are a little weird it takes a long time to get used to it because you know you're you're like with your right joystick you're controlling the look that your that your character does the left is like moving forward and back so you're kind of constantly doing this sort of three directional thing because she's looking for clues to kind of help move the puzzles forward um very very beautifully done love the story there this this game is a part of a trilogy i guess it's it's a a single story told over three parts i guess but i've heard bad things about part two like they went in a different direction this one is very who am i what am i doing here why type mystery and i've heard that part two kind of goes in a different direction and that's un- that's it's unfortunate because they could have continued with the direction they are going and it would have been extremely satisfying um so i'm hesitant to pick up the second part but we'll see yeah that's 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 sad that's sad. i mean maybe i'll check out this first one if it comes on such high recommendation it's pretty cheap so maybe i'll take a look at it so I obviously played some splatoon 2 i picked up uh kitten squad i tweeted it out kitten squad free game uh, this is from uh, a developer plus PETA coming together. It has a lot to do with uh, animal rights and and the, everything PETA stands for. And it's a twin stick shooter. Um, it's not great. Uh, you'll play it for half an hour, 60 minutes and be done with it. Um, what's interesting is it tells a story of what's these terrible things that happens to animals. Um, and uh, it's pretty sad. It's very uh, drawn out and very visual uh, it made me be very sad to play it and then I got to kill a bunch of enemies and then I've uninstalled it because I don't need it anymore um, but I did pick up I did pick up Raging Justice I, I bought it day one um, which is from Making Games which we talked about it is a old school arcade side scroller beat em up ridiculousness uh, I played on wimp mode because uh, I'm a wimp uh, and I like to beat games first uh, and not keep dying you can sit down and play this game in about an hour and a hour and a half. I think I beat it in about an hour 20 through the eight or 10 different uh, things, uh, stages, uh, three characters. There's also like an endless kind of go on mode over and over again. It was good. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. It was okay. It was okay. I wasn't blown away. I don't know if I'll beat play it again, to be honest, maybe one more playthrough. Um, it was okay. I don't, I don't know. There, it was okay. It was, if you, it's on sale some point, it's totally worth it. What was the price when you bought it? Do you know off the top? I think it was like 10 bucks or something okay. like that. Four, okay. 14 bucks, something like that. So I think it's like a $10, $15 game. It's not bad. The art style is cool. The classic throwback to being in an arcade was fun. I like that. Um, but I beat it. You know, I, it, it kept me enough that I, I beat through it. And I'm, I'll probably play it again as one of the other characters just to see if it's different. I'll you know have an update if it is. Um, but it was fun. It was, it was over the top ridiculous, just like we thought it would be. So, um, real two quick ones here, uh, talking about pinball FX three, which pinball is a whole topic into itself, but I picked up the pinball arcade, which is back on the eShop after being kind of, I believe pulled from some really weird things with Bally. The pinball arcade comes from Farsight studios. So this is not the same studios that does pinball FX three Farsight studios also did Stern pinball arcade, which is already on the eShop, which I hated, um, Pinball Arcade, this is the original, this has been out on all sorts of systems, has some overlap uh, in the of the actual tables that are on Stern Pinball Arcade, because the goal of the Pinball Arcade from Farsight is 
pixel perfect accuracy of recreating a table. So a table of a pinball machine that's in the real world, they give you one, which is Frankenstein, uh, which is a real pinball arcade. So if you played those and you like that style where it's super accurate, super, you know, this is the one that you would play as a kid, that's what the pinball arcade is for. I like this a lot more than Stern Pinball Arcade, which is super confusing because they're both pinball arcade. I hate that. Um, but the tables are really expensive. They only give you one uh, to start with, and the UI was really a hot mess. So I don't know. I there's the, the 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 thing is, do you like realistic pinball or do you not like realistic pinball? And I'm more in the vein of pinball effects, where it's real pinball. It's still pinball, but it's a re envisioning of what crazy cool stuff can we come up with that maybe will never be a table. So that's kind of my breakdown of of that yeah no i'm right there with you i that's my preference as well fx all the way i like the fun kind of arcadey i I don't need it to be a real pinball game like i'm not on i I like the idea of pinball and it just like let's make it a better version of that because of the technology yeah the last thing i tried out which is the blaze blue cross tag battle it's a trial version this comes out in june in about a month so this is Blaze Blue Persona 4 uh, under Night in Birth and uh, I think uh, another another web series um, from Arc System Works. This is a uh, 2v2. So you have two different player characters that you're you know fighting game like a Tekken or something like that. It's super good. I blown away. I'm blown away and I might buy it. I'm check out the trial. It's free. The online play is really buggy. It's really stuttery, but they have a month to figure it out. It's super good. I'm blown away. I downloaded it, so I'll give it a shot. Yeah. The online infrastructure is super wacky and weird, but um, yeah. All right. Is there anything else you got for me, Michael? No, I think that's it for me. All right. Well, I think that's going to do it for this week's Nintendo Dispatch. You can find us everywhere on the internet. I'm at James Montemagno, at MS Rivette, and the podcast is at Dispatch Podcast on Twitter or NintendoDispatch.com. Don't forget to enter our amazing contest where you can win all sorts of amazing things and share it with all your friends. So until next week, this has been yet another Nintendo Dispatch.